Dearest Bertie, I hope this letter finds you well. For the past ten I have been confined to the manor with only my immunosuppressed aunt and the maidservant. To better my mind, I have been trying to use the days productively and have been practicing daily my recitations of the great poet Doja Cat, whose works you will of course be familiar with. With the weather so beautiful as of late, I have taken regular turns about the garden. Due to my poor aunt's sickly nature, she has not been able to join me, so I have become quite accustomed to the company of my maidservant Eliza. I have been in regular communication with Papa, who is stuck in Quimbian, desperately seeking passage home. He writes to tell me that our dearest friend John Quilton, of the toilet paper Quiltons, is well and has made a small fortune from this crisis. Despite the stern words of my aunt urging me to use this time for self-improvement, I find that I cannot go a day without some frivolity. <laughs> Yesterday, I spent four hours in the bath and finished a season of Gossip Girl. Wishing you health and broadband connectivity, Lizzie. My dearest Buttercup, I am pleased to hear that you are well and been finding ways to occupy your time. The passage you wrote me about your bathing activities inspired the greatest of ecstasy within me. It made me ponder. What if I were there? <laughs> Winky face. However, I worry for you alone in that house with just your decrepit aunt and your father stuck in the wastelands of Queen Bian. I have committed to this page a sonnet to express my deep affection for you. If Corona didn't stop us from mingling, my hand on your thighs would be lingering. What if I were with you? My balls are so blue. From all this wanking, my hands are both tingling. The fire of my loins are a simmering. I'd like to give you a good fingering. I think that you're hot, so hop in my cot. Our exertions would leave us both glistening. Yours most devotedly, Bertie. Eliza, Eliza, you must come and look at this letter that I received from Bertie. Dearest me, I was under the impression he was a gentleman, but judging from the vulgar contents of his letter, oh, I'm so sorry. I've been so distraught with what Bertie said. Men these days have such little manners. Oh, never mind. My dearest Lizzie, I was disappointed not to hear back from you this month. Of course, I am aware that your lack of reply is likely a sign of your intense interest in me and an encouragement of my continued courtship. Given that my last poem was so impactful that you were stunned to this silence, I've dedicated my time to writing you another. Without you each night, my maypole is flaccid. A shame, because erect, it really is quite massive. I look forward to when our bodies become acquainted. And at long last, I finally get to see you naked. I have also enclosed a wonderfully realistic drawing of my maypole. As you can see, it is indeed generous in size. I hope that it will provide you comfort during this dark time that we must be apart. Your persistent admirer, Bertie. Another letter from Bertie for you, my lady. Throw it on the pile. 